Hi everybody, this is Catherine, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Armored Core 6. We're going to start by optimizing Windows and after that we will go inside of the game. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one, causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So, I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off, and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphics setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottleneck. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for an example here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's going to show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have a, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for Nvidia, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for an example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. So if you have an NVIDIA card, just go on your NVIDIA setting, go to control panel, open it, go to manage 3D setting and just use pretty much the setting that I'm currently using. Honestly, they're pretty much default. So the first one that you need to change is your low latency mode. If you have this technology, make sure that it's at on. The other one is your if you want to lock your FPS. Uh, for an example, you have like a 170 Hertz monitor and you want to stay in your G-Sync ring. Uh, range sorry you just put your uh, FPS here at like something like 167 something like that you want to be under 170 Hertz to always stay in your G-Sync range so if you want to do that it will do that for all your game it's a global setting over there so I'm gonna unlock it and this is pretty much it if you have access to the change ECC state I recommend to uncheck it this will slow your VRAM so you don't want to use that for change resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So you're, if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. And super important, look at your refresh rate. A lot of people <laughs> are missing this step. They buy like a new screen and by default it's at 60. So use the uh, maximum refresh rate that is available on your uh, monitor. The last parameter will be your G-Sync. So I recommend if you want to use G-Sync, I recommend to, first of all, you need to enable it. And I recommend to use the enable for window and full screen. So if you're playing a game like in borderless mode, it will be applied. Also, you can select just one uh, display screen, depending on whatever. If, if your second screen is not compatible with G-Sync, you will just push it to one monitor. Uh, me, I'm not using it. I have a 4090 uh, for my GPU, so I just want to unlock my FPS. So in majority of the game, I'm getting like 250 FPS and um, my monitor refresh rate is at 170 Hertz. So I just want to lower my input lag. So that's why I just unlock everything, but it really depends on your situation. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue. But if you're playing on a laptop, 
really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's going to make sure that it optimizes your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32. Just divide it by 2. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically. And you just lower the software like that. And you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software. And also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2% to 10% boost in your FPS, depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's, it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game, so we're gonna start with the screen mode. I really recommend to play this game in full screen. You will see that borderless, sometimes I was getting some random stuttering, so I'm not recommending to using that. For resolution, I recommend to go native, so depending on your monitor, if you have a 1080p monitor, 4K or whatever, just make sure that you're playing native. For the frame limit, you can go until 120. Honestly, you should just use that mode. If you're playing on the laptop and you have issue with your thermals and you just have like a 60 Hertz monitor, just lock your FPS at 60 will be better for you. For VSync, I'm not using it. I don't want to add any input lag in this game. You can use other technology like FreeSync or G-Sync if you have it. If you don't like those steering, you can definitely turn your VSync at on. I'm not using HDR. I recommend to put the rendering best setting at off. You don't want to use the auto deck. Go with quality select at custom. And now we're going to edit it manually. So the first one is texture quality. This one, if you have 6 gig and more of VRAM, you can definitely play maximum. 4 gig of VRAM on your GPU, go with high. 3 gig, medium, less than 3 gig, go with low. So I'm going to go back here. NTL easing, not a huge fan of the NTL easing in this game. It looks very blurry, so I recommend to go with off. You can expect 6% boost in your FPS. For ambient inclusion, this one I recommend uh, to use medium at off. The, look, the game looks very flat. For sure, you're going to have more FPS, but just at medium, you can expect a nice 7% boost in your FPS. I recommend to deactivate depth of field and motion blur, better visibility, and you will gain like 2 to 3% in your FPS. So that's why I go with off. Shadow quality, this is pretty much the parameter that will provide you the most of your FPS. So if I compare maximum to low, you can expect 20% boost in your FPS. But at medium, it's a 17% 17, sorry, percent boost. So you still want a decent visual quality. So that's why I recommend medium. Pretty much the same thing with lighting. Uh, maximum to uh, medium, you can expect 6% boost. If you go at low, you just have 1% difference. So that's why I recommend medium. And for the effect, I recommend also medium. If you're getting some crazy drop in your FPS when you're fighting, it's probably because of your effect quality, so definitely go with low. But if you don't see that, just stay at medium. Volumetric fog quality, this one is probably, probably the second parameter that will provide you the most of FPS after shadow. Uh, I recommend to go with medium or even low. It really depends where you are right now in the guide. If you're still struggling with your FPS, definitely go with low you will uh, have a big boost in your fps and if everything looks fine and you're not struggling you're missing a couple of fps go with medium reflection quality i recommend to go with low you have three parameter and honestly the game is very fast paced you don't necessarily see your reflection and it will help a lot to stabilize your fps less drop and more fps so that's why i recommend to go with low water surface quality also low Shader quality, this is right now start at medium, but honestly, after, when you are at the shader quality, you did a lot of modifications. So normally your game should run 
great uh so definitely test i if everything looks fine just stay at i if you're still struggling go with medium and for sure the ray tracing i don't recommend to using it it will tank your fps a lot so just put this one at so this is pretty much it for my Amored Core 6 guide. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.